Yo, what is good Jets Nation? Welcome back to Jets Media. This is Richie and in this video, I want to talk about some Jets players that benefited the most from the hiring of Robert Sala and the offensive coordinator Mike LaFleur. So these two guys are bringing in brand new systems to the New York Jets on offense and defense. And I want to talk about, again, which Jets players are probably going to benefit the most from the new systems put in place. Before I hop into the video, I just want to mention, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. With that being said, let's jump right in. So the obvious first player who will benefit the most from this hire is Quinnen Williams. Every Jets fan knew right away when the news broke that Quinton Williams is going to eat under Robert Sala. So the reason why is because Quinton Williams in his second year in the NFL, he had a breakout campaign. He had around seven and a half sacks and his rookie campaign didn't look too promising to some. I always saw the potential. I'm like, do not write off on Quinton Williams after one year, please. Guarantee he's going to break out second year and he did indeed. So I think Quinton Williams has a chance to be a top five interior defensive lineman in the NFL. He's that young and has that much upside. And he has a dominant trait to him where there were some flashes he showed in 2020 season of Aaron Donald. Do I think he's going to be the next Aaron Donald? No. Aaron Donald is a generational talent and nobody can compare to him. But if he could become half of what Aaron Donald ever was and just become that presence up the middle at a dominant fashion, Robert Sala is the guy to unlock that from Quinnen Williams. Quinnen is hyped himself. Here's his tweet when the news broke. Yes, sir. He was pumped up. So Quinnen Williams is definitely on the right track with his head, uh, head coaching hire. He loves his energy. He probably loves the scheme. A 4-3 system fits best for Quinnen Williams. So expect Quinnen Williams to have a ridiculous year in year three. So Obviously, it's not just Quinn Williams who's benefiting on the defensive line. Jonathan Franco Myers and Foldy Fatukasi, those two guys are young and upcoming defensive linemen themselves. Jonathan Franco Myers, he plays a similar position as Quinn, and he plays on the end. He plays, he can move a uh, defensive tackle. He's young and has a lot of upside. He got to the passer a lot. He stuffs the run. He's a really good defensive lineman. Foldy Fatukasi, he's more that nose tackle type of guy that Damon Harrison snacks. That, that's my comparison to him, where he's just that big guy that's playing that nose tackle spot stuffing any run up the middle so we know that joe douglas wants to dominate at the line of scrimmage we have it in place on the defensive line and he's starting to build it on the offensive line so that those three guys definitely quinnon and the other two and john frank myers and foley fatukasi those three guys benefit the most but let's get into some other players right so another player who we all forget that's even on this roster his name is cj mosley do you guys know who he is because he got signed to the jets two years ago and has played one and a half game or something crazy like that and we're paying him ridiculous money but yes he's still under contract he will be a new york jet next season bearing any you know jets trades or joe douglas decides to waive him who knows what they'll do but as of right now cj mosley's a jet next year and he is a guy that can lead the squad who knows if he if he's even in good shape or mental because he's been out of the game he sat out the entire year and then he was injured the entire 2019 season who knows what cj mosley will become but he has proven to be a top middle linebacker in the NFL when he plays. I mean, we obviously haven't seen him play on the Jets, unfortunately, for even back-to-back -back games. But when he's in the Baltimore Ravens, he was a top five middle linebacker. That's why we signed him to that ridiculous deal that Mike McCagney gave him. We signed CJ Mosley for a reason, and we just haven't seen it yet. So the hiring of Robert Sala really shows me that CJ Mosley could be the next leader of this defense that we need. And he's going to lock down, be that um, play caller, be the quarterback of the defense. We need him to step up because that will be a huge X factor for this defense in 2021. Another player on defense, obviously he's going to benefit the entire defense, but I just want to narrow it down to some specific players. And the last guy I want to talk about on defense is Bryce Hall. Bryce Hall is a rookie fifth round pick last year he played the second half of the year after he healed up his ankle and he shows so much promise down the line he had a crazy one-handed interception and he looks like a guy that can be a starting cornerback in this league I feel like 
with the young potential that we have in him, he's going to thrive under a system. And who knows, maybe we bring in Richard Sherman for a cheap one-year deal. He's a free agent and he loves Coach Sala. So you never know if Richard Sherman wants to come. We have Sherman and Bryce Hall. He can develop Hall himself. That would be awesome, but we will see. Bryce Hall's just going to, he looks like a guy that's going to be part of the Jets secondary for the future. Joe Douglas drafted him. He's a guy that he felt like, all right, he fell to the fifth round because of his injury concerns. I'm going to take the risk and he's my, he's a long-term answer. He's not going to solve any problems for me this year and Joe Douglas went out there and got him luckily he did because he looks like a stud and I feel like he's going to benefit from the system so another player that would obviously benefit but we don't know if he's a jet next year is Marcus May I'm not going to go into deep on that but let's just hope we resign him I think it's a priority for Joe Douglas and I feel like he needs to be there because he's a veteran of the secondary but let's shift gears to the offense because we also have a brand new offensive system under Mike LaFleur who I'm just so enamored by, and I cannot believe we're going to have a Shanahan-style offense, and I'm excited. So one player that is a guy that we were pounding the table for all offseason last year to have a breakout campaign is Chris Herndon. Yes, I think he's going to benefit from this. We see what the San Francisco 49ers do with their tight ends with George Kittle, Jordan Reed, whoever filled in for that role always benefited from the system. This is a system that succeeded for like decades from Mike Shanahan to Kyle Shanahan to all the people that are under the tree of Shanahan's. They love offense, obviously, and they are creative. They're innovative. And hopefully Mike LaFleur learned really had a he obviously is the passing game coordinator so he never really had to do any play calling because that's all Kyle Shanahan but I think he learned he was with Kyle Shanahan in Atlanta when they went to the Super Bowl and then he came with him to San Francisco so he's been learning under him for a long time and they know how to use tight ends so Chris Herndon I feel like could potentially in this system have a breakout year we saw what he can do he showed flashes at the end of the 2020 season he had a nightmare and I mean nightmare first half to the year but then he started clicking he had some really good catches in the end zone he started getting a chemistry with Sam Darnold again that we've been waiting for and waiting for so he's definitely going to benefit from the system in my opinion um, another player is Denzel Mims we saw what happened with Devontae Parker when he was with Adam Gase people were writing him off as a bust and then he leaves Adam Gase and he's a top receiver in the NFL when he's healthy Denzel Mims nobody's writing him off as a bust I'm not saying that but he did not get utilized properly in Gase's system. Let's just tell it straight. He did not get any targets, and it was frustrating. So Denzel Mims is probably going to be the number one or number two option in this offense. We don't know what we're doing offseason for free agency. We can sign a big-ticket guy like Allen Robinson to be the number one, or we can go in the draft and get a number one. But Denzel Mims is going to be a starting outside receiver. Whether you label him as one or two, it doesn't matter. He's going to be a starter on this team, and I think he's going to benefit. That I really feel like he has potential to thrive in this system. We saw... Brandon Ayuk, all these Debo Samuel, any receiver that was the go to option on the San Francisco 49ers under Shanahan thrives. This is a system that is really successful. So, obviously, like I said earlier, Mike LaFleur is not Kyle Shanahan, so we cannot expect it to be that dynamic, but you never know. And another player is Makai Becton. I feel like they're going to run through Makai Becton. It's kind of a, a zone scheme that they run, a play action bootleg. I love Makai Becton in the system. They went out there and got Trent Williams for a reason because an athletic, big left tackle like Makai Becton and Trent Williams fits this team and this system perfectly. So Makai Becton is going to be balling out in this system, and I'm excited excited to see that and the last guy I want to say that's going to benefit from the system if he's on the Jets next year because listen I know a lot of Jets fans don't want Sam Darnold to be the quarterback but I think Sam Darnold is going to benefit from these head coaches if he stays with the Jets I'm aware that the Jets could easily draft Justin uh, Fields or Zach Wilson and I'm behind those I like I said in my previous video I am okay with keeping Sam or I'm okay with drafting a quarterback. I don't really have a preference, but in this exact moment, I'm going to tell you if we do keep Sam Darnold, he's going to benefit from this. And let me tell you why. The hiring of Mike LaFleur is only going to put Sam Darnold in a system that he's most comfortable in. He had a similar system at USC. He had a similar system under Jeremy Bates. He was a uh, product of the Shanahan tree. He was the offensive coordinator under or an assistant back in like Mike Shanahan days. Uh, I forgot which team, but he is a Shanahan type of 
offensive coordinator. And Sam Darnold showed a lot of presence in his rookie season. Every single Jets fan saw Sam Darnold perform his rookie year, and it gave us all hope because he looked like a really good quarterback in those last four games. He looked like he was dueling with Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson. He just looked like a guy that had a bright future. And then Adam Gase came around, came around and just completely shuttered his confidence he probably gave him a playbook that's way too complex for anybody to understand because adam gase is just like an x and o's guy he's like a genius supposed to be a genius of that and i feel like he just over complexes things and the offense was just a mess the receivers weren't in sync nothing was working um obviously sam Darnold played terrible under gase in his second year like really bad but what i'm trying to say why i feel like sam will benefit with this head coaching hiring and the new offensive coordinator if he's the jets uh, starting quarterback next year he's comfortable in this system it fits him best i said on twitter multiple times if the jets move on from sam Darnold, i want him to go to the san francisco 49ers because shanahan's offense fits him perfectly and i feel like he would thrive now we have a shanahan style offense brewing in new york so why not keep sam Darnold and let him see what he can do because we have a guy that has three years of NFL experience. We don't have to worry about a rookie year and a sophomore slump, but we all got through it. So I feel like that's the that's why I feel like Sam Darnold's gonna benefit from this the most. But you never know. The Jets could easily trade Sam Darnold for capital and draft Zach Wilson or Justin Fields. You never know. So those are some players I just thought of that are definitely gonna benefit the most from the brand new Jets coaches. And let me know down below in the comment section some players I didn't mention or some of the players I did say and you guys want to add on to it. Let me know down below. I would love to hear from you guys. Overall, I'm excited as all hell that the Jets got a brand new head coach and a brand new staff is coming in. The culture is different. The vibe is different. This is a really good day for Jets fans. Let's go. The light is finally here at the end of the tunnel. Like I always said previously, things are trending upward. We got a real head coach, a CEO, everything I wanted, everything Jets fan wanted in a head coach we got. Let's go. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Let's go Jets. Peace out.